Sego, Swagwego, Zita Yungats. My name is Zita. I am Anandaga from Six Nations of the Grand River Territory, and I am the Community Enhancement Coordinator with the Office of Indigenous Initiatives here at Western. I am pre recording this live uh, from my dining room, and I hope that you are also enjoying uh, this virtual open house and uh, learning about Western from the comfort of your own home. I'm going to be chatting with you today about the Indigenous Student Center, which is a part of the Office of Indigenous Initiatives. We're going to talk a little bit about um, our physical space on campus, some of the programs, events, and services that we offer, a little bit about the Indigenous student community, and how we can support you during this like exciting journey into post-secondary. So here at the Indigenous Student Center, um, all of our staff, there's about seven of us, seven or eight of us, um, we're all here to basically be um, your support system and your home away from home. Whether you are thinking of coming to Western and you live in London or Chippewa or Muncie or Oneida, or if you're coming to us from, from further away today, maybe somewhere in Northern Ontario or outside of the province, we wanna be that support and we make sure that all of our programming and our services um, address your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. And we want to make sure that we provide services that are culturally, you know, relevant to you and, and your experiences as Indigenous peoples. And I wanted to highlight our, our wampum belt here today. That's the image on the screen because it talks about our relationships between staff and students. So you can see that we've got two people kind of represented. Um, one is staff, one is students, and the white row of beads between us, the connections between us. The connecting beads there represent our seven guiding principles. I'm not going to go into terrible detail about them, but as you can see, um, those are the things that we, we want to, to guide us when we're making new programming and when we're supporting students. So, um, you know, I take the, I take what this wampum belt represents really seriously in, in my own work um, for how to, to work with our students and respect and support them. Um, and the, you'll notice that there's the two white lines of beads kind of extending out to the end of the belt from the person. And I like to think of that as um, well, in two different ways. One, I like to think of it as, you know, the relationships that we have with our students, they don't end after someone graduates. You know, those are relationships that, that we have for, for life. There are many students who have graduated who um, I'm still close with and I still consider a part of my family. Um, but I think it also represents how we're always bringing and welcoming people into um, that relationship that we create. So, um, that's why I'm excited to to talk to you a little bit more about what we what we do. So this is our physical space. Some beautiful pictures of our physical space. So we're located in the Western Student Services Building, and I know that might not mean too much to you at this current moment, but you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. It's a really great location because we're basically in the hub of campus. We're right beside the University Community Center and the biggest library on campus, Weldon. We're a short walk away from the bus stops and lots of you know major areas for for classes and things like that so our space houses a 10 station computer lab with with complementary printing we have like you can see there our kitchen and we also have a quiet study space and then just general spaces to to hang out and to and to study and to get work done um, now obviously this is um, some examples of things that um, are available to students and could be available to you over your time at Western. Um, we do have some modified space modified space requirements um, because of the pandemic, but our our center is still open um, and our our center will continue to be open. Uh, and during general non-pandemic times, our students do have after hours access to the space. Um, but currently, students still have access to the space um, for when their staff in. And that's from 9 to 4 p.m. each day because our staff offices are also housed here. You can't really see our like our offices in any of these pictures, but they're just lurking just out of view of the camera. <laughs> 
and something really exciting and new um, and will be opening by the time uh, you come in in September of 2021 is our Indigenous Learning Space. So this is additional space um, to our Indigenous Student Center. This building is located on the south end of campus and this picture is just a rendering and it's going to house event space, some more like community hangout space, um, a, a spot for our Indigenous student groups. We have a number of Indigenous student groups um, to to house themselves, uh, a garden and a outdoor classroom space. Very, very exciting. And I'm not gonna lie, I had to limit myself to only one picture of the renderings because they're just all so exciting. <laughs> So obviously beyond our, our physical space, we offer a lot of different programs, services, and events. Um, so I just wanted to highlight some really key ones for you today. First up, our Accessing Transition Opportunities Program, also known as ATO. Now, no matter um, where you're at, we know that the transition in a university can be a difficult one, whether you're coming straight from university, you've taken some time off, maybe you've taken like 20 years um, off of school and you're coming back, or you're a college transfer student, or you're coming from a different university. No matter what uh, the situation is, we're, we're excited to have you and we're excited to support you. So ATO um, gets you connected with Mandy Bragg, our advisor, our academic advisor. She's worked at our center for over 20 years and it's just, an amazing support to for students. Um, she's there to celebrate with you when things are going well and she's there to support you um, when you need it. Um, she can help you advocate for for you know time off if you need to go home to attend ceremony or um, anything like that. She's there to help you know navigate how do you talk to your professor about those sorts of things. She's there to help you kind of plan out your degree um, if you maybe change your mind midway through and want to pursue something different. Um, and she's also there to kind of help connect you with different services within the Indigenous Student Center and across campus. So for example, if you are meeting with Mandy and you're feeling really stressed, she might connect you with um, one of our visiting elders, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, or she might connect you with tutors because of, as a part of the ATO program, there are tutors available for every major kind of first year class. So she might connect you with a tutor to help ease, you know, your stress by giving you some extra support. We also have um, orientation events. We host these typically before the O week um, or before O week. So you don't have to pick and choose which one you want to go to and a really great way to start building your community right off the bat to get used to campus a little bit before you start classes, meet some really cool people from across different faculties, get introduced to the staff at um, the Indigenous Student Center and you know get used to the center and all that kind of stuff. Orientation events are, are a really great way to to start to build community and to make that transition a little bit smoother. We also have circles of support and leadership. Again, another great way, way to build community. This program is open to undergraduate students from any faculty, any year, any age. They get together um, over the course of the academic year, at least once or twice a month, um, where the first, ha like the first hour is spent getting to know one another, building community, you know, chatting about what's going on, like what your experience is, uh, is and getting support from your from your fellow students. And then the second half is usually a really fun um, and informative activity. It might be someone coming in to share a little bit about their experience as an Indigenous person in post-secondary. Um, it could be making corn husk dolls or learning about medicinal teas. It's just a really awesome program. Then, like I mentioned before, we have visiting elders and cultural counseling. Um, we've got three visiting elders, Myrna, Bruce, and Grandma Irene, who are available via phone. Um, again, really great to help ground yourself if you're if you're struggling a little bit. Um, you know, just chat with them, or if you have questions about um, identity or culture, they're they're there for you. And then cultural counseling, we do have an arts therapist, Tisha, who again is there to to help you navigate through um, 
your emotions and what's going on in your life in a creative way. We have a nutrition program because we want to make sure our students have access to healthy food and feel like food security. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. And, and so during COVID, you know, um, our kitchen is closed, but typically our kitchen would be open and stocked and students can come in and, and, you know, make meals and what have you. And we still provide that. We just provide, you know, takeaway packages for students. And then something new this year is Auntie's Table. So it's again, a monthly kind of event where students can get together, you know, take some time and de-stress, um, socialize and, and learn something new. For example, we're doing beading this month. We might do things like moccasin making um, and other types of activities, but it's just some time to take for yourself um, because you deserve that during university. You know, it's not all about studying and, and getting grades. You need to make time for you as well. An amazing support that we offer in our center is we actually have uh, the awesome Donna um, who's pictured here and she's our financial aid coordinator. So she helps our current students find bursaries, scholarships, um, navigate OSAP and bank, um, band funding, um, all that kind of stuff. But she's also available to support you as a prospective student if you do have questions and uh, she's super awesome. So some examples of financial aid that we provide in the center and at Western is we have emergency bursaries. You know, things come up out of the blue and you might need some extra support and we're, we're able to provide that for you. Something new this year is we have a National Indigenous Scholarship. So there'll be three per year and the successful um, people will get $50,000 over their entire um, undergraduate journey. So over four years. We have a student mobility grant. So for those of you who may be listening in today from uh, maybe, you know, up north, Thunder Bay or, or Trout Lake or somewhere fly in, or, you know, maybe you're coming from a different province altogether. Uh, we want you to feel comfortable and secure with the idea of, of coming to Western by knowing that if you need to go home to visit or go to ceremony, um, or you're just missing the fam, that there's there's some financial support available to you. We also have the Marjorie Baldwin Memorial Bursary, and there's five per year at $3,000, and that's available to students who are actually involved with that ATO program I talked about. And the last one is the Dr. Valio Marketing Award. So there's one of those awards per year for $1,000, and that one's really special because um, that award is kind of acknowledging students who have really contributed to the Indigenous student community um, at Western or in the broader community of London or within their own community. And we usually present that and a plaque to students at our Indigenous graduate ceremony. Another major thing that we offer is admission support. Um, There's so many things we can support with, you know, everything from I know where I want to go. Say you know you want to do law school, but you're not quite sure how to get there. Our manager of Indigenous Recruitment and Enrollment, Kylie, can help you with that. If you have questions about how to apply, you know, how do I apply online using the Ontario University Application Center? What do I apply for? How do I apply if I'm a mature student coming back to school or if I'm a high school student from out of province or a transfer student, you know, um, what are transfer credits, all these kind of nitty gritty questions around admissions, uh, we can support you with those. We don't always have the exact answers, but we are very savvy at helping to find the answers if we don't already know them. So again, uh, your person of contact is Kylie. You can reach her at indigenous.admissions at uwo.ca. Don't worry though, I have that email at the very end of the presentation. And another great resource for you if you're thinking about Western is on our website, indigenous.uwo slash students. We have a tab called Future Students um, where you can kind of go through it. And anything I talked about today will probably be in that Future Student tab. The other important thing that Kylie can help you with is navigating the Indigenous Admissions Access category. So 
we at Western want to provide accessible admissions pathways to our students and one way we do that is through this admissions access category um, where there are seats for Indigenous students in different faculties. Um, for example, at nursing there are four seats set aside for Indigenous students in that program. Well, how do you be considered under this access category? It's pretty simple. Uh, the only thing that you need to make sure that you do is self-ID when you apply through OUAC. Now this is important for the Indigenous Ac Emissions Access category, but it's just important in general because that's how we know that you're interested in our school. So if you uh, don't self-ID when you apply, we don't know that you're interested, so we can't reach out, you know, make, every make sure everything's all good with your application, answer any questions, and just, you know, let you know let you get to know us a little bit more so self-iding is super important and again self-iding is how you can be considered under this admissions access category once you've applied through OUAC and you are set up with your western email and all that kind of stuff you're going to fill out this online consent form where you're just going to say you want to be considered under the access category and that you consent to your um, to providing personal information and that is that confirmation of ancestry components so that's a front and back copy of your status card Inuit trust or Métis citizenship um, and that information is just housed solely within the Office of Indigenous Initiatives it's not shared with other units on campus I know a lot of times people um, have concerns about the confirmation of ancestry and um, if that might be you, um, don't worry, you could still be considered under this admission category. You just got to reach out to Kylie again at that email um, and that will be presented again at the end of the presentation. But yeah, once you fill out that online consent form, then you're being considered under the access category. And we can always answer any questions you might have about it. So to kind of end off, um, I wanted to just highlight a couple of student groups, um, Indigenous student groups on campus. The first one is the University Student Council's Indigenous Relations Committee. So this committee um, puts on different events during the year and also, you know, advocates for Indigenous students within the University Student Council. So I've got their social media up there if you want to check out what they do. And then next up, we have the Indigenous Students Association, which is a club here on campus. Um, they put on a lot of different events during the year, our powwow, um, social, different advocacy events. Uh, they put on a health conference last year, and they also, you know, just do a lot of like fun, more community building, meeting different students. Um, they're a really great club, but I am incredibly biased because I did my undergraduate degree at Western and I was very involved with the Indigenous Student Association. So with that, that's the end of the presentation today. I know I, I threw a lot of information at you, um, but if you want to learn more, because crazy enough there is more, um, there's so much more I could have talked about today. Uh, you probably have heard that we like to provide the best student experience at Western and that um, obviously extends to our Indigenous student community, so there's lots more ways to get involved in, in, in programs and things like that. So if you want to learn about everything about the Indigenous student community, I would highly recommend checking out our Indigenous View book. You can access that online on www.indigenous.uwo.ca slash students, um, or you can email us at indigenous.admissions.uwo.ca if you want a physical copy. Um, sent to you. It's got student profiles, um, lots of information on the admissions process, etc. Um, also, of course, follow us on social media. Check us out on Facebook at Western U ISC or on Instagram at Western U underscore Indigenous. So with that, I just want to say Nyao Goa for considering um, Western. We are all really excited that you're you're thinking about our school and um, yeah, I hope you visit uh, with Paul and Donna at the virtual Indigenous Student Center booth, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.